William Nylander ranked ahead of Mitch Marner in the latest TSN Top 50 Player Rankings poll. Did they get the ranking right? We'll debate that and discuss whose roster hopes are in jeopardy after Berube's shakeup of the camp groups. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leafs Center podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. What's going on, Dave? How are we feeling on a Thursday? Feeling pretty good. We had a nice little funny moment between the two of us today even before we record the show we can get to that a little later we 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 can talk about that later on in the pod um i just finished up my first fantasy pool and it got me thinking we did a fantasy draft with the locked on leafs discord family last year we're gonna do that again we're gonna do another fantasy. yeah they're they're throwing it out there the invites out there so uh i'll throw in uh, a a link to the discord in the um, in the comments Mm-hmm. Or in the scroll description, if you want to join the Discord, and then through there, we'll get you in on the uh, fantasy. We did kick butt last year. We did. We, we were champs. We were co-owners of the team, and we yeah. were victorious. We were champions, and we will look to do the exact same this year. I would, uh, I would add. So anyone who wants to join, just you're not playing for first; you're playing for second. That's yeah. all I gotta say uh all right so yeah so we'll have that in the discord uh in the discord uh section and and you can find our discord uh on just search up lockdown leaves or there will also be a link down below all right um so interesting day of practice today did you see who happened to actually be down there uh today mm-hmm. interestingly matt sundin maple Leafs legend taking in uh, a little bit of training camp so that was cool to see what, what was he here for do you know I think it was for the OVO collection that was being announced with uh, with Drake's line. They're doing like a little. Um, what, how do they? How do they describe it? So uh, Drake's getting involved with the Maple Leafs now. Well, they've they've got like um, OVO stuff with you know with Leafs gear, but this is like it's called the Hometown Heroes Collection. Um, let me see if I can let me see if I can pull it up here. Yeah. But like, so I was there and I thought it was cool, you know, and everyone's asking like, oh, what's it like to have Matt Sundin there? And, and they're asking him like, hey, you know, you plan on speaking to the group, speaking to the team, like were you asked to come? And, you know, it's just it's always cool to have Sundin around. And and um, he was actually asked to about if he plans on coming down, if Austin Matthews gets close to surpassing his Maple Leafs goal scoring record. And, you know, you and I were talking about this before we got going on the show. Didn't realize how close Matthews was to becoming the franchise goal leader. Like there's a good chance this happens this year. I wouldn't say a good chance. There's, there is a strong likelihood it happens this year. Like Austin Matthews is sitting on 368 goals. He only needs 53 more to surpass Matt Sundin for most goals in a Maple Leaf uniform. Who's sitting at 420. Uh, he only needs 21 more to pass Daryl Sittler. So, you know, he's obviously going to be, he's going to do that easily. The 53 goals he should be able to do as well. That was something that I thought was kind of interesting. So he was asked if he was going to come out for that. And he said, yeah, I'd love to. We'll see if uh, if that ends up happening. Because if Rick Vive was there when when Sundin passed or when Matthews passed Rick Vives for single goal season, Vive was in attendance. So I think it'd be cool if Sundin was in attendance, if, if yeah. Matthews were to pass the franchise total goals record. Um, so we're taking a look at this on youtube and this is the new ovo line the maple Leafs ovo line that's not bad it's a nice it's called the hometown heroes collection interesting yeah i actually i like that sweater so there's looks like a basketball jersey okay sure Uh, why not pretty cool leaf sweater there some other leaf swag there's a a tribute video with sundin as well a classic little owl thing all right 
So uh, he was here for that. All right, cool. And then they said, I, 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 I'm sure like they probably there's probably other things he's gonna be involved with or doing in Toronto. Like I'm sure he spent some time in Toronto once in a while. Yeah. Well, I know he does do. do he does the Easter Seals thing too. Is that coming up this weekend? That's coming up pretty soon too, isn't it? The the Easter Seals with Lindros and Jana Heffer. That 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 might be coming up also, which which he typically is in town for. I don't know if it's now or November, but he's usually involved with that. But uh, yeah, nice to see Sundin in attendance. Um, but it was wild. Like we were just taking a look at some of the records, and like we just talked about Matthews, how close he was to surpassing Matt Sundin. Probably going to happen. And I forgot that last year the the goal number sixty nine that Austin Matthews scored actually put him as the franchise leader in even strength goals. Mm-hmm. Like somehow Austin Matthews in like four hundred and nineteen less games has more even strength goals than Matt Sundin. Think about that. Think about how electric that is. How unlikely that is. 419 less games, and he has more even strength goals than Matt Sundin. And Sundin was a scorer, man. Like that guy could shoot the puck. It over 500 goals his career. Oh, yeah. And like, I, I know he was huge, especially on the power play, patented one timer. Mm-hmm. I don't think there was a better, also a better player in the shootout than Matt Sundin. Like, mm-hmm. You get one on one with a goalie. Matt Sundin made some goalies look silly. Yeah, he had the he, patented backhander and on breakaways. Oh yeah, I remember seeing um, he was going up against like Lungfist one on one. Like, it didn't matter. It did not matter who you were playing, who he was going up against. Sundin made them look silly. And like, I grew up with Sundin, one of my favorite players outside of Curtis Joseph. Yeah. So yeah. we'll buy uh, our era. That's our era, right? Like when we when we were growing up as kids, those are the guys we looked up to, you know, watching those guys play and watching Matt Sundin, you know, captain the team, score a bunch of goals. And now we get to watch uh, Austin Matthews do the same thing. Um, Matthews also closing in on George Armstrong for top five all time in, in points. He'll probably do that this year also. He's got 649 points so far. Uh, George Armstrong was 713. So you're looking at what 50, 64, 64 points to uh, to tie Armstrong, 65, I guess. If you want to, if you want to pass him, I, I think it's very likely, injury aside, that Matthews gets himself to 65 this year. So pretty sweet, pretty cool that we could have Austin Matthews already in the top five and in, uh, in points and and you know possibly even as the number one goal scorer in Maple Leafs history. Um, Marner not far off either, by the no, way. he's not. Right. He's he's right behind. He only has 10 fewer points than Austin Matthews. Only 10 fewer points. So, you know, either of those two, I guess, could climb into the top five. They'll be kind of jockeying for positioning um, throughout the whole season. I would imagine, you know, first to try and surpass George Armstrong. So, uh, you know, kind of really cool that those two are always kind of tied at the hip, and um, you know they'll, they'll they'll be playing together again this year. Uh, I would imagine that uh, we're going to see a, a lot of it, and we're going to see a lot of goals and a lot of points from both of those two. Um, Matthews had a maintenance day today, though. So yesterday we talked about how he left practice, did not attend practice today either. Uh, it was called a maintenance day, though. So. You know, whatever you want to read into that, uh, Craig Berube is not one to offer up a whole lot of information. Um, in fact, when when asked, the reporter said, what's going on with Matthews? He said, uh, you know, like, is he going to play tonight? Like, is he going to play it all this weekend? And he basically shot it down. I was like, yeah, we don't speak in hypotheticals. So <laughs> and just like went on. He's like, next question. <laughs> like, OK, then. All right. So we don't know if he's going to play tonight or not. We don't know if he's going to play at all this weekend. We have no idea the severity. Uh, all we know is yesterday we were told not serious. It's upper body, but not serious. And uh, today was just a maintenance day. So that's that's the information that we have when it comes to uh, to Austin Matthews at this point. Yeah, and I, I expect that with Craig Berube. He's not the most forthcoming. I mean. No coach is really ever forthcoming with certain injuries, but like especially with Matthews, like they've always been very guarded of really saying what it is, right? So we're we're told it's not serious. We're gonna have to believe it's not serious at this rate. Yeah, I mean, I I, I 
I believe that is true. It's probably not too, too serious right now. Um, we went into depth on it yesterday. So if you're curious about our thoughts on, you know, how, how scary this could be, I guess you could go back to, to yesterday's show where we discussed it, but you know, for now we'll, we'll take coach at his word. It's not too serious. And um, we'll see if he plays at all this weekend. They got a couple games, you know, against Montreal. Uh, we'll see if he ends up playing or not. Um so interestingly enough, though, today, Craig Berube, uh, despite, you know, not having Matthews at his disposal, decided it was time to split the groups up, time to get the group together. And I thought it was very interesting to see how the camp groups, keep in mind, there's three of them, uh, and now there's three distinct groups. It's no longer group A, group B, group C. It's like the main group, the hopefuls group i suppose you could call it and then the developmental group and it's very distinct and i think it tells us a lot about what is going to happen over the next couple of weeks with some of these roster players why don't we come back talk about you know what the groups were split into and what it means for guys like grabankin guys like cowan guys like uh Pacioretty and holmberg reeves we'll get to all that more on the other side I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Moore Studio. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. The Game Time Picks curates and makes things a lot easier so you can save on sporting events, concerts, comedy, theater events, whatever you're looking to get tickets to. Uh, they've got the all-in pricing. Uh, they've got terrific seat views. You can get a panoramic view of your seat right from the app before you buy it. And they've got the lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code Locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code Locked on NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. Today's show is also brought to you by FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you can place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed whenever you place your first $5 bet. Doesn't have to be on the NFL, could even be on the NHL. You like the Maple Leafs at plus 1500 to win the Stanley Cup? Go ahead, make that wager. There's also plenty of over-under props for the Maple Leafs, your favorite Leafs, Matthews, Nylander, Tavares, Marner. You can place that $5 bet and get yourself $200 in bonus bets guaranteed on your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. Mike DiStefano, Dave Morissuti with you as we are each and every weekday morning, Monday through Friday. You can find us, uh, the Locked On Leafs podcast, wherever you find a podcast and also up on YouTube. It's all Leafs all the time. Um, So a pretty big day in terms of Maple Leafs training camp. Today was the day where Craig Berube really decided, okay, it's time to 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 really separate and hone in on on what this team is going to look like come opening night. Let's, you know, get rid of all the fluff and let's just set this thing up. We've got, you know, three groups. The first group, they now is considered the main group. And I would imagine that the 23-man roster that gets chosen and selected uh, for the Maple Leafs for opening night is going to be compiled of the list of names on that roster in particular. The second roster, barring injuries or barring somebody coming from out of nowhere, I would imagine the guys on the second roster have already kind of been, it's been decided like, okay, these guys not quite ready to go. And then the third roster group three is a mix of injuries and complete long shots that probably will end up going down to American league uh, training camp pretty soon. Uh, And, and, you know, not too worried about those guys. Um, but there's a couple of names. I want to actually start with group two before we even move into group one, because there's a couple of names on group two that I think are are quite notable. Um, and, and the first one, obviously, is Easton Cowan. If you scroll down just a little bit, Dave, 
Easton Cowan is in group two. And that kind of surprised some people because, you know, it, it felt like Easton Cowan was going to be given a fair shake, an opportunity to try and make the team out of camp. But based on him being placed in group two instead of group one leads me to believe that uh, Craig Berube doesn't think that Easton Cowan's as ready as many Leaf fans thought he would be. Yeah. And, and again, like I, I know that there was a lot of hype, a lot of, you know, pushing, you know, a, a very talented player, right. And trying to get some of that youth into the lineup. But Easton Cal, we had already said that he was really only going to make the team if he had a spectacular camp and was making it pretty much a no brainer that the Leafs should include him on the roster. That's not like, again, I, I think realistic expectations, right? Yes, he did some good things in juniors, but Craig Berube said, no, we got to make sure that he doesn't have the junior habits in him. Yeah. Right. And, and that's, <laughs> this is his second NHL training camp, right? I think it's, reasonable to expect that there's going to be some there's going to be some growing pains there are going to be some ups and downs so is it surprising yeah i would say it's a bit surprising at least this early on but i'm not totally surprised that we are getting to this point right i think it just speaks to the expectations of having a realistic outlook on where he easton Cowan truly fits into the plan right yeah, and honestly, as training camp wore on and you started to see the the other guys and, and, and you know the veterans, the depth, the, the the style of play that Berube wants, it really did seem like it was going to be a long shot hope that Easton Calm was going to make the team over guys like Pacioretty, over guys like Steven Lorenz, who both are in on PTOs and look likely to, to make the team. You know, a guy like Pontus Holmberg, who we saw kind of stick up for, for the team and, and show some grit. And, and I know that, again, you know, he's someone who's in Group A, Group 1, and he was, you know, Sheldon Keith or Sheldon Keith. Whew. Put that in the swear Ooh. jar. Uh, Barube was asked about Holmberg, and, and he he had glowing things to say about him. Said he likes his, you know, likes the way that he controls the puck when it's on his stick. It's hard to get off. Likes the way that he can kill penalties, and and you know, this is a team that desperately is looking for penalty killers. So hearing that made me think, okay, clearly Chief believes that Holmberg can do some things for this team. You know, as opposed to just being a fourth liner, he could be a special teamer. I'm not sure that he obviously felt the same about Easton Cowan. So he's not going to give you that same level of pizzazz uh, or, 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 you know, versatility um, that, a, you know, a, a guy who necessarily doesn't have a, as good a, a highest ceiling as Cowan has, but probably will give you a little bit more this year in particular. So I'm not surprised uh, to your point. Maybe it's a little earlier than we anticipated. It's only one week into camp and he's already basically decided like, these are the group. This is the group that I want to get a look at. And the other guys, hey, thanks for coming out. Still compete. There's still a chance. Injuries could happen. You never know what could happen. And someone could just go super Saiyan mode and force their way, you know, back into the fold, back in the mix. Callum being one of them, to be fair. Brube did say not to jump to conclusions based on the two groups. But, you know, if you're right, reading between the lines, that's kind of what it what it looks like at this point. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, that's the thing, right? You never, never say never. I mean, look, Austin Matthews is dealing with the nailman. Yark, Cal Yonkroke is dealing with something. Like a lot of guys are have been dealing with something, but I, I think that also you're getting to a point in camp where you want to start getting past the audition stage and getting to the we need to get ready for the season stage as well. Yeah especially with a new group, right? New group, new systems, new coaches, you know, like it's not, it's not like the past couple of years where you basically, you knew exactly what you were getting. You know, the coaching staff knew the players well, the players knew the systems well and the, what the coach wanted. It's all completely different, right? This year. And, you know, Burbay even said, you know, when asked, why did you make the switch so early to, to make these two concrete groups? And he basically said, it's time to get the group together. You know, we got to tr start building some chemistry with, with the guys who we, you know, believe are going to be part of this team this season. So, um, you know, uh, comments like that lead me to believe that certainly whoever is in group two, they got a long, long shot if they want to make the team at this point. I think most of the eyeballs are going to be looking at, uh, at group number one. You could chuck up the 
chuck it back up there and we can actually look at group number one uh, as well. Actually, was there anyone else who's in group two that kind of surprised you before we, you know, I mean, quickly move on? I, I know one game doesn't really solidify someone, but I thought maybe an Alex Steves. Yeah. Get a little more of a look in group one. Yeah. Um, otherwise, Grabankin, Grabankin, did that surprise you that Grabankin was in group two? I thought Grabankin had, I mean, obviously standout in group in the first game, second game, not as much. Um, a little again, yes, a little surprised. Um, and also like Alex Nylander, the fact that now eh, it's looking like he, I mean, he, he's, on, he's on an NHL deal, so that's yeah. Kinda... I don't know why people are so surprised by that. You know what else? Yeah. Uh, people were surprised to see Cade Weber put in this group. I don't know why people think Cade Weber's like an NHL hopeful this year. It's really not yeah. like he's 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 got a long ways to go, also. Yeah. W- I I owe an apology, by the way. Uh, yes. I owe an apology to uh, Mietinen, VT Mietinen. Yeah. I, 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 I was wrong. I said he was the player who got stripped against the Senators yesterday. I forget who it was. Um, a stop truck on the game winner. Yeah. I blamed him. I was very wrong. It was not Mietinen. It was Matinen. I, I misread the name on the jersey. I just assumed, that, and I I, I had thought I heard it, and I'm like, did he say it? And I'm like, I it kind of, I had I had a bit of a, eh, didn't listen to that. Well, Mietinen's not even a, a defenseman. That's the sad yeah. part. Like it's just, and it just, I mean, he's a prospect that I've I really never really seen. Anyways, it just slipped my mind. I was like Mietinen, Matinen. They're, they're they're it's the same name almost. So that's that's on me. I apologize. Saw a couple people point that out in the comments, and yes, I do owe an apology to Mietinen. It was Nicholas Matinen who uh, who had the the terrible giveaway to Zach Ostapchuk, cost him Leafs that preseason game. So uh, just wanted to clear the air on that. All right, uh, now we can look at Group One really really quickly. Um, just because I, I just want to take a look at the names there. Tanev, Benoit, Domi, Marner, Lorenz on the PTO in group one, Yarncroc, uh, McCabe, Matthew Nyes, Timmins gets group number one, Pontus Holmberg, Matthews, Lilligren, Stolars, Riley, Wool, Camp, Pacioretty, McMahon, Reeves, Marshall, Refi gets an opportunity in group number one. That's Austin Matthews' favorite player for those who, uh, who, who were listening the other day, uh, Nylander, Nicholas Robertson, John Tavares, and then Oliver Ekman Larson. So no surprises. Uh, Marshall Refi, I guess would be the, the biggest surprise, I suppose, but yep. you, know, you, you need camp body still. You still need eight guys to, to, to be out there. So I guess we, we had question marks like, Ooh, who's the eighth defenseman? I guess Marshall Refi would be considered like that next man up. Who's they'll look at, you know, from Marley's, to the NHL, Marshall Refi is maybe a little closer than you know Weber or or Topi Nimala. Like that, that's that's something that you know that that's what those groups tell me at least. Yeah, that's 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 where I'm leaning to as well, right? Like you're you're going closer to the guys you kind of expected to be in the mix, right? Mm-hmm. Right throughout camp. So yeah, I mean, so some people might be surprised, like a Connor Timmins, but. They're gonna give him, a, like it's just like well, why are we worrying about a Connor Timmins? Well, why give him a chance? Be? Like right? you need eight defensemen. Is is there eight defensemen better than Connor Timmins on the Maple Leafs? No. Yeah, like I, I it just like some like I I had uh, I had someone message me about some of them, and I'm like, you're you're like who are you expecting o- over him, right? And like. We're not talking about anyone substantially better, right? No. Or like someone that's being snubbed by the coaching staff. Well, it's funny. Like, I mean, we we cover the team on a day-to-day basis, so it's our job to, like, read and react to the ongoings, like, literally the day-to-day actions of what happens at Maple Leafs camp. So, like, we have to react to this stuff, and we have to break it down and, you know, try and reason with it and come up with opinions as to what's going on and why things are happening. Um, educated opinions, I, I, I would say. But like, ultimately, it doesn't really matter. I mean, Timmins, okay, he's in group one. Unless injuries arise, he's not going to be in the lineup on night one of the the season anyway. So I wouldn't lose any sleep over it for those 
who see names that are are you know borderline and be like, oh, why why are they on there? It doesn't matter. Really, it does not matter for some of these dudes. Um, not sure which group is going to see action tonight against the Montreal Canadiens. I'd imagine it would be the NHL group. They haven't played since Sunday, and the other group played on uh, on was it Tuesday. So, you know, we'll see. That information, I'm sure, will come out uh, later on today. Matthews, TBD on that one. Domi did play down the middle um, in practice in, in Matthews place. So I would expect to see that be uh, be the case if that happens. I think you're pulling it up there. What uh, Marky Masters tweeted out what the lineup looked like in practice today. So, yeah, it was nice. Domi and Marner, McMahon, Nylander, Robertson, Pacioretty, Tavares, Holmberg, and Lorenz, Camp, and Reeves. And that kind of looks like what could possibly be like an opening night type of roster. Riley Tanev, OEL McCabe, Benoit, and Lilligren with Refi and Timmons uh, as as your seventh and eighth defenseman out there with Wool and Stolars, obviously, as your goaltenders. But if you go back up, um, Matthews and Yarncroft are not there, so you can add those two in, you know, wh- wherever it fits, obviously. Yeah. You know, Matthews up at the top line and wherever they end up putting Yarn- Yarncroft, but... You know, these are pretty much the the, the the 13 players you got the or the 14 players that they're going to choose from. You've got the 12 you're looking at on the screen right now, plus Matthews, plus Yarncroft, and they're going to choose 12 of those guys. And that's going to be your 12 forwards on opening night. That's that's what I do believe at this point. Yeah, and um, we haven't seen Lorenz play yet because he was he's been dealing with uh, a little upper body thing. So look to see how he fits into the plan. and. You get to see Robertson with uh, NHL bodies, right? Yep. So yep. we'll see how he he does with that. Uh, I mean, this is like a clear audition for him. Yes. In the, in the top six, I know a lot of a lot of comments from people that weren't too impressed with Nicky Bobby in the well, first, his yeah, first yeah, which makes sense. And and I'll say this: like, if you are trying to put together the lineup, Matthew slides in at center. Domi's going to go back to his spot. Like Robertson might be a placeholder. If you're looking at, you know, the full roster, a healthy yeah. roster, that might be a placeholder position for Nikki Bobby. So again, talked about the other day, lots of pressure on him to show something in these final couple of games that he's going to have to, to impress the coaching staff and prove that he deserves to be, you know, on the team, on the roster for that, uh, for that matter. And, you know, we'll see if he gets the opportunity tonight. If he can make the most of it, he he better because it's it's uh, time's ticking for him at camp this year. All right, we'll take one more quick break. When we come back, as expected, both Mitch Marner and William Nylander have made their debuts on the NHL Top 50 list. We'll tell you who is ranked ahead of the other. It might surprise you. We'll get to that next. Today's edition of the Locked On Lease podcast is brought to you by Indeed. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey, leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day. Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences, so the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. So join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. fast. And listeners of the show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your job more visibility at indeed.com slash locked on so that is indeed.com slash locked on right now support our show by saying you heard about indeed on this podcast indeed.com slash locked on terms and conditions apply need to hire you need indeed the locked on these podcast continues with mike de stefano and dave morissuti uh, we've been talking about, you know, the NHL top 50 lists that are, are rolling out both Sportsnet and TSN are doing their own top 50 lists. And we had made the prediction that we were going to see our, our first set of Maple Leafs debut here in the twenties. And, uh, we 
we were correct. They both debuted. Um, I'm assuming you've seen it, uh, the, the the ranking. So I'm not going to ask you who you believe um, was ranked higher than the other. But uh, do you believe that the rankings got it right? Actually, wait, what's Sportsnet rankings? Because TSN had TSN had Nylander at 20 and Marner at 23. TSN had Nylander ranked ahead of Marner. How did Sportsnet have it? Uh, I'm pulling it up. They they so I think it's a little bit of a different scheduling too because mm. uh, Sportsnet's at 30 to 21 right now. So okay. I, they haven't gone into the 20 to 10s. Well, it's, like, okay. Yeah. So but uh, are so Nylander's at 27 there? right now. Nylander's at 27, and Marner's not on the list yet. Marner is not on the list yet. So so Marner's t- so. so Marner's t- a top 20 player on Sportsnet's list. Yeah. Meanwhile, TSN had Nylander at number 20 and Marner at 23. I got to say, and I, look, this, this, this hurts me to say as, as obviously a, a TSN guy, like I work for TSN. I can't, I, I, I just simply, and I know I'm going to get flamed for this in the comments because most of, of Leafs Nation have already made up their minds that they hate Marner. They want him traded for like a fourth round pick and, and a fourth line center. I literally saw that comment the other day yep, on I this on, the, on one of our videos. But like, come on, Mitch Marner, as much as people hate this guy and want him out of town, He's the he's the better hockey player. He just is. Like I'm sorry. I th- that's my opinion. I don't know. You may have a different opinion. But if I were doing the rankings, I sure as hell would have had Marner ahead of Nylander. Not too far off. It's not like there's you know a big gap between the two. But we're talking about a, a Selkie candidate who's touched up on on a hundred points, like ninety nine point Selkie candidate. Like Nylander's not in that stratosphere. Can he score? Yeah. Is he more, you know, a more powerful scoring threat? For sure he is. But when Marner's at his peak, when he's playing with confidence, the puck's on a string, and he's setting guys up left, right, and center. And, you know, what he's able to do, killing penalties, blocking shots, uh, he's able to strip pucks off guys. He's got a really good stick in the defensive end. Even in the offensive zone, the amount of times that, you know, uh, oppositions have tried to clear the puck and he's just knocked it out of the air and kept uh, ozone time alive for the line is is unbelievable. So I find it ridiculous, to be quite honest with you, that that, you know, we've gotten to a point where people are so high on Nylander and so low on Marner that Nylander's jumped Marner on some of these lists. I mean, uh, we're talking about a player who's only 10 points behind Austin Matthews, like. I, I like, what are we talking about? And that guy's a Selkie candidate, a perennial Selkie candidate. I find it kind of absurd that Neil Anders ranked ahead of Mitchell Martin. That's my opinion. So two things I'll say on that. Um, yeah, Marner is has had obviously more than 90 point 90 or more point seasons than Neil Anders, so obviously he's able to put up more points, and the Selkie stuff is true. I do wonder how much of this is also the playoff performance, right? Because uh, unfortunately, hold on. Unfortunately, you talk about Mitch Marner as a perennial goal scorer and Selkie guy. We don't get that in the playoffs. We just haven't, right? Well, and you, no, Nylander you, you is not Selkie. Hold on. You get the Selkie. You do. So he still plays excellent defensively. His numbers are still excellent when it comes to you know, expected goals against. He still defends and and does what he has to defensively. But it's not to, but that's not what they need. Like, if you're looking at Mitch Marner as a, what they need him to do in the playoffs, it's, you got to score. You got to produce offensively. Mm -hmm. I I think that's, that's the knock. His reputation took a big hit after that, after the playoffs last year. Yeah. Right. It's fair. It's fair. Right, but is it enough to go over Nylander? If we're looking just strictly at the numbers, no, it's not. But it's I, I there's when you put these lists together, it's not just people looking at at numbers. Um, especially I don't I don't know who TSN pulls for their their list. I know who Sportsnet pulls. 
Mm. Um, so that's probably why Marner got. There are some, and I know some people who. Well, uh, it's, it's like all the hockey. It's all the hockey yeah. guys that that, that so, get, like I, I'm. I wasn't pulled. Some random producers yeah. aren't pulled. Like a random guy in some truck. Like it's it's your your analysts. Like all the analysts, like Duffy and MJ and O and Noodles. Like all those guys are the ones who who are pulled. It's not random schleps who don't know anything. I will say. Yeah, like at the end of the day, it's like the gap is more of like Nylander to Marner together than it is like Marner to Matthews in my opinion. Yeah. Right. I just so, really quickly want to, want to, want to say something about production. Cause I feel like this needs to be, this needs to be said. I, I I'm, I'm assuming, you know, the answer, but like, you know, we talk about production all the time. Who do you think has more production in the playoffs throughout their career? Marner or Nylander? I don't think it's that far off. I think it's just more, I think the expectations are always been higher with Marner than they have been with Nylander to produce more. Okay. What does it have to do with talent and skill? I, but how you're far talking about a ranking? Like we're not talking about pressure right now. We're talking about a ranking, like which player is better it has nothing to do with, with, you know, who has more, you know, who's, who's been asked of more. It's just, who's better flat out. So I know that, Neiland, I know that Marner is above Nylander in this. Marner's also played a few more games, but it's not. Uh, so points per game, Marner. So fifty points in fifty-seven games. Yeah, Mitch Marner has fifty points in fifty-seven playoff games for points per game at point eight eight. Nylander mm-hmm. has forty-three and fifty-four for point eight zero. So it's it's very you know minuscule difference to be fair. But, you know, Marner has seven more points than William Nylander does through a playoffs. And it's funny because, you know, everyone talks about like, oh, Marner doesn't produce. We talk about production. William Nylander, he produces in the playoffs. Statistically, Marner has more points. He, like he, He's produced more in the playoffs and he adds a second element of defense. at an But the only thing level. I will say about that, Marner and Nylander do not play equal amount of, to- of ice time. And Marner does get more of a feature look on the power play, especially early on in his Leafs tenure. Sure. Who has the harder defensive, usually defensive assignment? Like who's got to go up against. That's true. Who, who I'm, I'm, against not, you're never, you're, I'm not going to, I'm not arguing that Marner is a worse defense player than Neil is a better. Defense I'm not ta- player. No, 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 I'm not talking about defensively. I'm saying Mitch Marner, when he has to try and score goals, he has to do it against Victor Hedman, right? Neilander was not having local, to do that, uh, but he's playing with Austin Matthews. Sure that is. usually helps a bit, right? okay. But but that's that's my argument. You know, Marner has eleven goals in his part in his postseason career. Nylander's got twenty. Yeah, but he's a goal scorer. Like Marner's not a goal scorer. He's a setup man. I know, but that's but again, people value goal scoring, right? Like, sure, but like I, okay. So why is Panarin ahead of all of these guys? Panarin's a playmaker. It's not a goal scorer. He can score goals, but he's a he's more of a playmaker. Panarin can be ranked ahead of these guys. Yeah, but Panarin's also produced very highly throughout his career. Panarin's never won a Stanley Cup. Panarin's never won a Stanley Cup. He's gone a lot further than the Leafs guys have, though. Yeah, but they were calling Panarin like the New York Marner during the playoffs this year. Well, this year. This well, is like I'm- just, I mean, it's not yeah. just this year. It's like typically the big reason why the the Rangers haven't won a cup is because Panarin's kind of gone quiet in the playoffs. But for mm-hmm. some reason, he doesn't get dogged for that in these rankings. I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. It, 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 there's a lot of uh, what people believe in the players. That's They don't just always just look at the numbers. They also just look at the players themselves. There's a bias with it. There always is and always will be. Of course there is. I just, you know, my personal opinion is that it's ludicrous. To well, have you need to have a talk with you guys over at TSN then. Oh, you're... trust me. I know I am. I will. I, I certainly will. And I'll have to ask who had Nylander ahead of Marner because I think it's it's just crazy to me, man. Like, it's this is a guy where two years ago people remember when he, you know, let up against uh, that non-icing call and just didn't go into the corner to get a puck, and everybody was talking about it for for months. You know, remember that against Tampa Bay a couple of years ago? Now all of a sudden, he's a playoff warrior? <laughs> like, what are we talking about here? Anyway, um, 
yeah, we got to fly. We got to fly. We're running out of time here, but I, I found it interesting. Uh, let us know below. Let us know in the comment section below who who is the better player. I already know what our comment section is going to say, actually, but uh, I, I am curious. All right, that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Lockdown Leafs podcast on all platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore more studio and follow the show as well at Locked on Leafs. We'll be back with another episode for you guys tomorrow. Until then, keep it locked right here on Locked on Leafs.